services. So who loses? In other words, the existing American poor lose. So how could the existing American poor, of whom there are an awful lot of African Americans in that group, why is there no voice screaming, wait a minute, stop it? We were here for 100 years, 150 years. Some people have been here for 400 years, by the way. I learned that when I was living on Long Island, when I met African Americans whose families have been there since the 1600s when the settlers arrived. People don't know that about African Americans, but that's another story. How could they be stepped over by this American president, I keep asking, and they keep asking me? American values no longer exist. Black Americans are not the enemy of, these, of this country. We were good hit involuntarily, but we're now we are a part of this country, and it is this mass illegal immigration problem that is destroying the country. Well, I'm, I'm not surprised that Al Sharpton hasn't stood up for his African-American brethren. I'm not surprised that the grifter uh, Jesse High Jackson hasn't said a word. You know who they are. They're self-important, self-aggrandizing, and selfish individuals who've done nothing for their race and done everything for their own selves. You know that. 100 years, 150 years. Thank you for the call. Send the lady a government zero, but we're getting feedback because the radio's on. Okay, my friend. My friends, it's a crazy world out there. When you wake up and you see that Jimmy Carter, Jimmy Carter has said he has given bombing targets to Vladimir Putin in Syria. I said, what? Jimmy Carter, who whose policies... I would say the worst in the history of the country till uh, Obama came along says that he gave to the Russian embassy bombing plans that the US had uh, for Syria now first of all if it's true he committed sedition that's number one or treason now unless Obama wanted him to do that he he should be indicted for treason on the other hand this is the first thing Jimmy Carter has ever done that I agree with I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Today on Joe says no. Biden not to run, say the media. Well, they got it half right. Of course, they buy it hook, line, and sinker. They don't know what's going on. All they, all they know how to do is clean up their act in the morning and put on a tie and shirt and then be the parrots that they're made to be uh, as the fifth column. But let's go back to the big business at hand here. Melinda on WMAL, we have one minute for you. Fire away. Hi, Dr. Savage. It'll be very interesting to see how long the Israelis um, put up with what's going on in Syria especially with um, the Russians coming in, ISIS taking over many parts of the country. And not only that, but just in the recent few, last few days, um, the problem in Jerusalem with um, between Mahmoud Abbas and um, Hamas, uh, you know, with the Palestinians, um, it'll just end, not to mention um, the horrific... Well, I understand that you were with the U.S. Embassy in Syria, so you know a little bit more than the average caller. How does this end in your mind? Um, at some point, I think it's going to go nuclear, only because... Um, wait, wait, wait. You, you suspect Israel will have to use a nuclear weapon on which country? Well, probably on Syria, just because of what's going on. Um, it is surely my... Well, Linda, come on. Israel's not going to risk a war with Russia. I have the exact opposite viewpoint, and I'm going to explain why the Russian incursion into Syria is actually good for stability in the Middle East and good for Israel. Government Zero goes out to you. Stay in the line. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now. America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I it was on, but uh, whatever. It doesn't match my brainwaves. Welcome to The Savage Nation, hour number two. Today is Wednesday, which means tomorrow is Hillary Day. We're all looking forward to her sli slither out of the hearings. You know it's already been set up for her to slither out. You know that, don't you? You know, it's a Soviet uh, trial. You know, it's, a, it's, it's nothing. 
You know it's been set up. You know Paul Ryan and the others orchestrated the questions and the answers. She's going to slither out the same way she slithers in. But we'll watch it. I mean, it starts 7 in the morning, I guess, on the East Coast. No, 10 in the morning on the East Coast. When does it start tomorrow? In the morning. Hillary's probably getting ready now with a new pants suit. Another yoga class of some kind, maybe the snake. Maybe she's doing a yoga posture today called the snake, if there is such a thing. I, I'm not that into it. I mean, I know it's near Halloween, but I don't want to make obvious Halloween jokes. So at the end of the hour, if you've been listening for an hour, and it was a pretty good hour, I'd rank it as a B, B plus. This Monday was an A triple plus. I was so burned out from it, I could hardly, I couldn't even sleep that night. Yesterday was an A plus. Today is a, it's so far a B plus. Because I do A triple pluses every day. I'm dead in two weeks. And my doctor and my horoscope has warned me to slow down. <laughs> It's weird that the doctor and the horoscope have all said you may be in Aries and you may be doing more than you have ever done in your life, but you know, kind of cool it or your health is going to suffer. So I've cut back. I've cut back on a few planned events in my life. There's no need for them. And as the hour came to a conclusion last hour, I made a statement, which is a, a, a young a woman called. who used to work at the embassy in Maghazi, and she says, that what's going on over there in the Middle East with Russia, with ISIS, with this, with that, Israel's going to be backed into a corner and use a nuclear weapon on some area of Syria. And I said, I disagree. And then I concluded by saying the Russian incursion, we could say it's by no means a war. Make no mistake about it. That's not a war. This is far from a war for Russia. It's a Russian incursion, an air incursion. And the Russian incursion, an old, an old phrase, by the way, from the age of Cambodia, if you remember, but I won't uh, belabor you with that. I like to look forward rather than backwards. The Russian incursion is going to stabilize the Middle East, number one. And number two, it's actually going to be good for Israel rather than bad for Israel. Now, while it's true that Iran is fighting alongside Russia at this time, and Iran supports Hezbollah, the terrorist organization based in Lebanon. Lebanon collapsed. I explained that on Monday because they were so nice to admit the PLO in the 70s it destroyed the Maronite Christian nation, which fell into, into ruin as a result of their niceness. You know, not, kindness is always rewarded in the very same way, which is ru with ruination. I'm an absolutist when it comes to things like this, because I know the truth. But nevertheless, let's forget that for the minute. Russia, let's stick to Russia, if you don't mind. It's me who got distracted, not you. My dog is lying here with a sliver of sunshine coming through the studio. I bought him a new toy, which he has ignored. So I brought it next to his nose and laid it next to him and took a picture and put it on Facebook during the break. He still didn't care, but at least it looks cute. You know what's weird about Facebook? Is that I've tried different things. I only started posting on it myself two weeks ago. The picture of my dog got more hits than anything in the world. Oh, my genius, brilliant book, chapters from Government Zero, statements, comments. The comedy gets big hits, and pictures of my dog Teddy get big hits. People want relief from it all, you know. And that teaches me a lesson. So he's sleeping peacefully on his big bed. The, the toy is laying there on the floor. He doesn't care about it. It's an indestructible dog toy because he tears everything to pieces. I, so, oh, yeah, I was talking about Russia, something very important. So... so Never forget that there's a large emigre Russian community, a Russian emigre community in Israel. You, th you have to understand that, first of all. In order for you to understand what I'm about to say to you, you have to understand that Israel is not as homogeneous as it once was. Far from it. It's a very diverse nation, and the Russian emigre community is extremely powerful in Israel, with very deeply connected roots going all the way back to Russia. So what I'm saying to you is, there's dramatic, dramatic communication between Russian Israelis and Russian Russians. And it's not lost on Putin. Putin's very, very smart. He's not going to wipe out the Jewish state. No way in a million years is he going to wipe out the Jewish state. He's going to stabilize the Jewish state. He is going to play the role that the United States once played before we had um, not Metternich, but Quisling take over the, the, uh, the presidency. See, we needed a Metternich when we got a Quisling. Barack Quisling Obama, but that's that's too obscure. So I believe it's good for the, the health of the Middle East. You need a strong uh, country there to stabilize things, to knock some heads together, get things straightened out, get rid of the crazies, uh, the, the ISIS crazies, kill them off, 
get rid of them, and rein everybody in and put it under control again. And the U.S. once played that role, but under the weakling, maniac, psychopath administration that we have, uh, it's not happening anymore. We've lost our, our ability to do that. They're focused on important things like global warming. Now that's John Kerry's biggest job now, now that he's ruined Israel and, and, and empowered uh, Iran, the terrorist state. His big job now is global warming. Speaking of John Kerry, the lunatic, he had the nerve to say this morning that any politician who does not believe in the global warming thesis is not fit for office. This is a new, a new twist on it. I'm surprised he hasn't called for their imprisonment in the enlightened liberal manner uh, that others have, have expressed recently. Well, anyway, that's one topic. There are many others on the Savage Nation. If you care to comment on anything I said in the last hour, and some of the things are very powerful and worthy of continuing in this hour, uh, the phone number, we have one open line, is 855-400-7282, the Savage Nation. The main thing I said last hour is that, of course, Joe, no, no, Joe. Biden won't run. Even Wolf Blitzer can see the headline. They all saw the headline. Biden says he won't run. And I said they had it half right. In my humble opinion, Biden was sent out there today to reintroduce himself to the public because he could have announced it with a press release saying, I'm not running. But why did they give him a 20 minute speech to reintroduce him to the public, to let everyone see the nice white guy, the trustworthy old Joe six pack, the good white man and the good white wife? Why? Why would they have done that? Tell me why. Just in case Hillary goes down, whether by the Benghazi hearing or another scandal, they got somebody in the dugout. Don't you understand that? They don't want that crackpot, that foul breath crackpot nutcase from New York's Lower East Side come Burlington, Vermont. And I'm the first one to say it. I was glad to see that the actor James Woods listens to the show because I've been saying it for two weeks. The only reason Bernie Woods, <laughs> the, only <laughs> the only reason Bernie Sanders... I mix him up with Colonel Sanders. I don't know why. The only reason Bernie Sanders has al been allowed to get as far as he's gotten is to make Hillary look more normal, less crazed. Do you understand that? Because if, she, if he was really a threat to her, he'd be eating a sushi uh, bagel by now. They would have fed him a sushi bagel or a sushi, a sushi knish. I can guarantee it. Or they would they put him on a run in Marcy Park for his health. So, no, no. Sanders is not getting anywhere. So who's left? The only Democrat that was worthy of the name of the presidency was a, they made him into a laughing stock, an actual war hero. Jim Webb, the guy was a, a beautiful, proud American. They rendered him useless. They so hate this country. They so hate the military. They so hate the cop. They so hate the white male that they turned this red blooded American hero, Jim Webb, into a laughing stock. That's your Democrat, socialist, Islamist machine of today. So he's not a threat. So who's left? Colonel Sanders? He's no threat. I don't even know who else is up there now. It's it's uh, it's Hillary, Colonel Sanders, and who else? Is there a third one? I don't remember. I don't even know who was up there. Who was there? It just shows you. Was who else? You don't remember, do you, Robert? Who? Chafee. Who? Chafee? He was he he looked like a Paul Barrett in his Civil War daguerreotype. Lincoln Chafee, a real candidate. If you were painting a, a picture of the Civil War in in in, uh, in, sequia, in sepia tones, it would be his face. Where they got him from is like a constructed fa He's not a threat. So it's nobody. It's Hillary versus the uh, Colonel Sanders. So that's that. So I started about that. So now number two, Netanyahu's comments I mentioned. I asked who in radio is more prophetic or more far-seeing than me, and of course, the nobody. Because just yesterday in this program, and I don't know how I did it, I talked about the Palestinian Mufti, his relationship to Nazism, his desire to bring the plans for a gas chamber to Israel, to, sorry, to the Middle East and exterminate all the Jews going back in the 1930s before the state of Israel had even been founded. And I challenged all of the anti-Zionists who listened to this show, including Jews, who themselves are anti-Zionists, many of these liberal psychotics, to understand that it has nothing to do with the state of Israel. It has to do with the race of Jews itself that they wanted to exterminate. Nothing to do with Israel. And I talked about it, and yet I wake up this morning, and there here's Netanyahu saying the very same thing. So I said to myself, maybe the, li the listeners are right who believe in me and call me uh, such beautiful names. And I don't know. So I said, what difference does it make whether I have prophetic 
uh, qualities or not. 